So, ma'am, thanks for joining us today on Leadership Log, which is a podcast for the Air Force Lifecycle Management Center community on topics of interest. And the topic of interest today is learning about an organization within our organization, the Acquisition Center of Excellence. Uh, so, ma'am, if you could introduce yourself and give us a little bit of your career background. Sure. My name is Melanie Marshall, and I am the uh, Division Chief for Director of the Acquisition Center of Excellence. I'm here at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, which is kind of the home base for the Acquisition Center of Excellence. Um, so I have been uh, in the Air Force as a civil servant for now 34 years, which I'm very, very proud of. Uh, December 18th is my anniversary date. I'll have 34 years. And I've always been here at Wright-Patterson. Um, I started as a Schedule B logistics trainee um, back in 1988. Uh, and worked many programs. And then after doing a stint in um, logistics and actually grading out on logistics, I actually went through one of the uh, first reduction in forces that I can remember. Uh, and so I was then moved over out of acquisition into protocol and uh, did a stint in protocol at AFRL and then moved to what was then ASC uh, protocol and was the deputy and then the chief of um, protocol. So did that until 2001 and um, General Raggio was, uh, had retired and General Reynolds came in and said, hey, I think it's time for you to go back into acquisition. So moved back into acquisition as a program manager where I've been working ever since. So I've had a great career here, lots of wonderful experiences and um, really, really awesome opportunity to be at the Acquisition Center of Excellence, or the ACE today. Okay. And so now uh, tell us, what is what is the Acquisition Center of Excellence? What is it? Sure. Um, the Acquisition Center of Excellence, or the ACE, or we call ourselves the One ACE, um, is a group of multifunctional um, members who really are here to support on-demand, give independent assessment and advisement to teams, we're force multipliers. And so we are here to help teams think through their strategies, um, maybe challenges that they're having in execution, going into a milestone review. We focus mostly, uh, and in the past, we were pretty much 99% all pre-award support. So that means you know, uh, a new, new uh, requirement going through the acquisition strategy and into um, a lot of the uh, source selection as well as um, sole source acquisition. Um, we do focus on uh, a lot of support on source selections, but of course we do support across even sole source. Um, we've seen an actual increase in foreign military sales. Um, so which is that really is a great thing to uh, partner with. And so we are just here to really help teams think through these complex strategies and complex acquisition challenges that they are facing today. Um, we are in uh, five different operating locations. Uh, we did have six. Our Eglin team has been um, uh, in kind of uh, combined with us here at Wright Patterson um, because we've stood down that location, but we're still supporting our EB. We support across all of our AFLC. MC uh, directorates and organizations, as well as at the AFMC level. Um, so we are really just here to be a force multiplier to help teams think through that critical thinking and to make good uh, decisions to innovate execution. Mm -hmm. So we had an a, a episode earlier this year with the gentleman who was um, an acquisition officer early in the, develop, in, the, in the beginning of ASD, what was called ASD at that time. Yes. Um, and he was talking about how one of the problems they had was organizations kind of poaching experts from one organization to the other, all right? And they were constantly trying to just take the best people and pull them. So it sounds like your organization is kind of that reach back capability to provide that level of expertise. Is, is that correct? Or? That is absolutely correct. Um, we have, you know, we used to be mostly people that were very mature, you know, 20 to 25 years of, of acquisition experience. And now what I'm really excited to see is we have a great mix. And I think that we are representative of our organizations, right? We have some that are steeped in acquisition and we have some amazing junior force people in these organizations that are willing to just jump in and learn. 
acquisition has really changed over the years. And so what we are trying to do is make sure that we can help people and we ourselves are embracing that change. We used, you know, years ago we had 5,001. Everybody was a long-term, you know, EMD program. Right now, it is such an amazing time in acquisition with all the different um, authorities that we have through 5002 that gives us all of the adaptive acquisition authorities and all different types of acquisition challenges and opportunities to go fast. And that's what we're really about across the Air Force is going fast. You can see it in, you know, uh, um, all of the uh, chief of staff's um, imperatives, you can see it in the operational imperatives, you can see it from AFMC to AFLMC. We're all trying to figure out what do we need to do to go fast, share information better and make better decisions earlier. Mm -hmm. And so what we are doing, what we're seeing is that even in our teams that we're working with, there are a lot of junior force that have, are being promoted quicker and so they are sometimes looking for a one-on-one -on -one trusted agent to help them think through challenges and, think, and make decisions. We're also seeing teams that are challenged with very complex issues as they're dealing with their contractor or trying to figure out the best strategy for their program. And so um, there's so much information out there. It's too much for one person or one team, even us, to understand everything. So we have a lot of reach, reach back with SAF AQX, our policy team, uh, yeah. SAF AQC, uh, SAF AQR, wherever we need to go, that's what we're doing now. And so uh, we try to, um, our mantra right now is leading while we learn. Acquisition keeps changing. And so while we're leading, we have to continuously continue to learn as our programs do. And so that's where we come together. And I think it's a beautiful blend when our program teams and our ACE and our external and internal uh, kind of uh, trusted agents in, in uh, specialized areas can help make decisions. Mm -hmm. and, and so now, uh, how big is it? How big is your team? And your you mentioned it right, Pat, but um, do you have other locations as well? Yes, and our, sure. basis. yes, so we call ourselves the one ace because we do we like to think as one and we like to learn as one and share as one. So we have Wright Patterson, which is the home base station. Um, we have um, Hill, Hanscom, Robbins and Tinker. Um, so there used to be about 69 of us and right now we're at about 60. Um, with the uh, <clears throat> with uh, Eglin being dissolved and, and that uh, mission area moving to Wright Pat. So we're about 60 strong across the uh, AFL CMC. Mm -hmm. And how do you keep in touch uh, with the other elements at, at your remote locations? Do you guys travel or do you use a lot of remote connections? Yeah, so we have been totally remote. I've been in this job since August of 2020. And I've met all of my operating location chiefs and, and uh, uh, members through teams, uh, like many others. We're hoping to get together uh, early in 22. But uh, the great thing is, is that we've all become very proficient in using these technicals, uh, technologies. And so it allows us to collaborate very well. Every other week, myself and my other operating location chiefs meet and make sure that we're all aligned in our mission, uh, sharing information. The great thing is that we have um, people from each one of the organizations that are pairing together now to help teams at different locations through workshops, through critical thinking. Um, and then we have our uh, the, one of our greatest accomplishments lately is the stand up of the digital enterprise launch team for acquisition or Delta. And so that is the team that is focused on the mission of helping organizations implement digital and, mm -hmm. and helping digital transformation across the center. And so we're partnered with uh, other organizations like the Digital Transformation Office um, and the Digital Campaign and the other SMEs across the center and the command to help implement digital strategies. Okay. Um, so you mentioned earlier that um, you used to be primarily pre-award um, as far as your involvement in the process. Um, is So are there common situations that you typically do get involved in the, uh, in, or is there particular places in the process that you your team generally gets involved? Well, I, you know, I, today I like to say there is no typical, right? <clears throat> we jump in wherever we're needed. Um, 
many programs do focus on support with us in the pre-award, so acquisition strategy through contract award. We also are seeing an increase of uh, programs that are coming to us for milestone decision support. Um, what are the right documents? What's the timing? How, you know, how does it work when we go into the building and, and are, we're going through milestones? What are the must have, the statutory versus regulatory because that changes you know, throughout time. And then, as I said, there's so many programs that are coming to us because they are moder they're being modernized or their legacy uh, in sustainment, but they're also interested in implementing digital thinking. So what can I do differently now that I'm already on contract? What should I be talking to my contractor about? Um, how can you help me with a schedule analysis? I think something is, something's going awry here. Can you help me with schedule a health analysis? Um, it's time for a milestone. So can we go through another risk workshop? So those type of things um, are where we're really seeing uh, uh, the stability, but we're also seeing um, an increase in new areas that normally weren't ours. Like, you know, we've had a PPBE for program managers, uh, how to put together an RFP, you know, how does an IP, how should an IPT work? You know, what does airworthiness look, uh, sound like and feel like if, you're, if I'm a program manager? How do I think about my stakeholders and how do I understand how to manage them and who should I put priority on? These are areas that are weren't normally in our, our products and services normal catalog, <clears throat> but we are seeing a demand for them. And so what we're trying to do is meet that demand. Uh, so you mentioned digital earlier. Um, and <clears throat> I think some, some people think that if you don't start off on the digital path and from the very beginning, then you really can't implement it. Um, but, but there are digital tools that you can uh, insert into the middle of the process or into a legacy program. It, so is that something that your, your group can help with? Yes, yeah, so um, our Delta team also is working. Uh, we have partners from the PLM environment. We have partners with that are working on the acquisition and sustainment data product um, from the EZS. Um, and so, there are lots of ways that we have helped and we have worked with. Um, for instance, if you look at some of our digital platforms, such as A10, you know, C130J, B1, who's making a digital twin, you know, B52, who was a legacy program and decided to go digital as they um, increased or update, updated their engine. But there are lots of different programs that are in sustainment or they're modernizing and they're like, okay, our, our baseline is legacy. We have nothing digital, but we're interested in going digital. And so um, in our Delta team, we have developed a digital implementation assistance uh, kind of a format to help really thinking teams think through critical thinking. And so it's all about if you are interested in that, asking the right questions to help determine what may be the best model for you. Um, digital can apply in many different areas and in many different ways. In some instances, for instance, for PLM, it may just be the first piece is making sure we have all the data and the uh, uh, correct uh, um, data rights and intellectual property that we can do what we want to do in this in sustainment it could be you know what has what is driving the worst you know readiness issue reliability issue maybe that's an area that we want to focus in on so there are many different opportunities to look for a program to look at does does uh, digital make sense for us and so we are really working and partnering with other SMEs to help make those critical decisions and, and make more importantly, help that critical thinking. Mm -hmm. So your team is really kind of broad, uh, broad based. Um, what, uh, what, when you're selecting new members, what are some of the characteristics that you look for? Um, so obviously you're not just hiring on um, seasoned professionals, but you're also taking on uh, junior force as well. Is there any common characteristics that you look for? So, you know, mostly we're looking for people who, if possible, have had a range of experience 
from ACAT ones to really, you know, ACAT twos and threes. We have people that focus on FMS because we're seeing a huge population of FMS programs that are coming to us for support and they're doing really innovative things in their contracts. <clears throat> and so that's driving, you know, a need to understand the FMS policies and the, and the way of doing business there. But really most importantly, we are looking for people who not only embrace the acquisition of old, but embrace what's happening in acquisition now and what's to come. There's still a lot of learning um, when digital came around, we kind of put together a book club within the ACE family and said, okay, if we're going to help, we've got to learn, but we're not embedded in any program. So how do we learn? So it involves a lot of partnership, um, critical thinking, researching, working together, um, developing workshops, being able to take um, uh, you know, constructive criticism and, and, and uh, just kind of change things around. And more importantly, listening to the demand signals of our um, customer base and then going after that knowledge and then creating the workshop or the, uh, the tool to help through that support. So yes, you're right. Um, the last uh, three people that have joined our team have not been uh, 20 plus years. They're more like six to eight years, but they've had a great um, experience through training programs. And so they're, they're eager to learn. And the most important thing is that they're gonna take this experience <clears throat> as they go back into the workforce after they leave the A's they will have seen a lot of different expertise, a lot of different experience, and they'll have that tool set, that tool set in their tool, bit, tool belt. You know, it, it's interesting that you mentioned continuous learning because uh, we all know the acquisition process is constantly being refined. It's always yes. changing. Uh, it's evolving all the time. What are some of the key modifications that you've seen um, in recent years in the acquisition process? So, you know, I think when um, Dr. Roper, uh, when he established, you know, kind of the adaptive acquisition framework and helping teams really, uh, really pushing go fast, speed with disciplines, uh, innovative acquisition and execution, <clears throat> 5002 to me changed a lot of the game because out of that, we had specific policies that really, to me said, I'm giving you the authority to do things differently. If I'm doing a software program, don't think of it in all the milestones as you would in a major capability uh, program. Um, think of it differently. How can we go fast? How can we get, and really it's all about continuous insight, continuous development, continuous building in many of these new authorities. Um, so, so, you know, software pathways, defense business systems, um, that is a huge area for acquisition. And we just can't think of it the same way, right? Um, mm -hmm. And so when I think when 5002 actually uh, became available, it forced a lot of teams to say, okay, maybe there is a better way to do this you know, middle tier capabilities when we were doing rapid fielding and rapid development and rapid prototyping. Um, you can't do things the same way as you did in a five year, you know, or four year uh, development program. And so it forces um, you to dig a little deeper and think about things. And then, you know, this whole tailor, tailor in versus tailor out, which means streamline to begin with, um, and then figure out what makes sense. And so I think that that really has allowed acquisition to really try things differently. Um, and really it's about that community, you know, those, those people at higher levels, making sure that you get that buy-in early of your strategy and what you are planning to do and what you're not planning to do. So I think that that's really what I've seen more in acquisition. It's no more uh, of just take the last program's template. It really is thinking through earlier and making good decisions based upon what you know, what you think is going to happen, the money that you have, um, you know, the, the, the risk that you see, what risk you're willing to take 
Um, you know, we're seeing a lot of that as far as kind of our, what is our strategy for fielding? Um, and so those kind of things I think are really helping. Um, this continuous ATO is another, you know, big help for programs such as that are heavy in software and defense business systems. You know, that continuous ATO, that DevSecOps, you know, development, security, you know, and then operating. It's a continuous cycle. And so um, I think those kind of things have been um, amazing for me in the 30, 34 years of my experience to see that progression. I grew up in an area where all programs were sole sourced, you know, CLS for the, to the contractor for life, for life. It is no longer that game. And so that drives um, a willingness to learn and it, and it drives, you know, willingness to change, to try different uh, strategies to go fast. Mm. <clears throat> um, so <clears throat> does your organization work specifically with uh, AFL CNC organizations or or do you reach out to other organizations outside of the uh, outside the center? Sure. So our prime our primary uh, responsibility is to supporting the AFL CMC mission, but we do um, support AFMC. Um, we've uh, worked with you know AFSAC, NASIC. We've worked with uh, Nuke Weapons, um, and through the um, the center level agreements, there are some center level agreements that specifically call out acquisition support to some of these organizations. Um, we do support you know as as resources are available. Um, and as on the demand, um, but more importantly, you know, now is a time that we have to work with other organizations for insight and knowledge and learning. And so, you know, in an area of, of some of these areas, you know, we're reaching out to the Navy and we're reaching out to the Army and we're learning from them, um, you know, space. Um, we have a team that has been working with them trying to figure out what they're doing in the area of digital for program management. Um, and so um, it, it causes us to kind of go past uh, the normal AFL CMC center to learn from. SAP AQXE actually has a team that's called Acquisition Center of Excellence. And so uh, every other week we have a tag up that SAP AQXE supports with all of their our ACE uh, across the center as well as our, our program element groups. Um, that really help us make sure that we stay aligned with what's going on uh, in the building at the SAF AQX, helping us with new policy insight, helping us, you know, sometimes we, we go to them and say, hey, I think this is what this policy is, is saying. Help me, you know, is the, am, I, am I interpreting correct? Who can we talk to to talk through this? Um, so, you know, it it's really is a good way to, um, really meet people outside. We've done a lot of work with AFID and DAU, you know, trying to learn from them, bringing them into uh, organizations where we don't have that level, that depth of expertise. And so we're reaching out to them to partner with us in different things. So uh, yeah, so we, it's not just us uh, teaching mm -hmm. ourselves. We have to be able to learn and share across the, the lines. Yeah. Uh, so what do you see coming in the future? Well, you know what? I see um, more challenges. I see uh, a continued call to go fast. I see a continued need to keep learning. I see a continued need to keep collaborating. Um, I think that with the operational imperatives and a lot of the AFMC and, and center goals, and the center goal of, you know, how are we gonna go fast through digital uh, without really any enterprise funding? Um, there's always a need to learn from others and to, if you think you have a good idea, to share it. Um, and I, I think that what we're gonna see is a continued need to bring people to organizations like the ACE um, that are willing to learn, that will leverage what they know and, and you know, kind of partner with what they're learning from e even our customers. We're learning from them every day because they're embedded into those execution organizations. So we know what they're doing, but it's, it's even as important to understand what worked and what didn't and why. Um, because we like to um, handle our best practices and lessons learned from that execution standpoint. 
it's okay to advise, but it's really important to understand what, what was the, the side effect of that? What was the second, third, and fourth order effect of that? How did it work? And so I think what I see in the future is more of that sharing. I see um, uh, more complex acquisition. Um, I see that we're just getting started in digital. I don't know where that's going with um, really a lack of enterprise funding, but I've seen some amazing work at the division and, and portfolio level where they said, hey, we're taking a stand. We're going to use some of our portfolio money and we're jumping in. The, <laughs> we're just jumping in and um, we're going to figure it out as we go. And so that is um, really exciting and amazing to see. So, you know, I think that, uh, you know, in, in closing, I think that um, the ACE is, um, we're going to continue to learn while we lead as teams are. I see some teams doing amazing work and I'm learning and, and from them. And I'm really excited to say that we're partnered with them. And I think that the uh, center will keep meeting the mission, which is building that capability faster through innovative acquisition and execution. So ma'am, that pretty much brings us to the end of our time. Is there anything that I forgot to ask you about or anything that you'd like to reiterate? No, I, I think we've hit all the, the salient points. Um, it's been a pleasure to um, do this podcast with you. It's an honor that the Acquisition Center of Excellence or the ACE was chosen and seen as a, um, uh, a needed and a force multiplying organization. Um, if you need us, please call us. You can find us on, on the, uh, in the Air Force portal or on the SharePoint. If you need to uh, reach out to us, just give us a call and we'll be happy to help. All right. Ma'am, thanks very much for joining us on Leadership Blog. We appreciate your time. Thank you. Have a great day.